and pushed me out. <laughs> and I was all in one motion. And uh, as I was falling, um, I learned that the, the, the heated suit glove that we wore didn't fit into the parachute uh, handle. And so I tried two or three times, and then I grabbed my glove and pulled it off and pulled the parachute. And I swung once and landed in a big pine tree. So uh, that um, the pilot bailed out about the same time. And uh, he, he was so unsure where we were that he hid out for 24 hours. Uh, he hid out in barnyards and he slept in haystacks and uh, <laughs> while everybody in the country was looking for him. In the meantime, they took us, uh, uh, the, the home guards in Sweden um, were all called out like, you know, to, and, and they came with their guns, you know, and they're all gathering us up, you know, and marching us down the road. Uh, this is this is a funny picture because here's a bunch of American flyers following with these. There it was farm country. These were just farm kids. You know, they're out there with their guns and they're following us. And there's a hundred kids behind us, trips and behind <laughs> on the whole parade, and they're laughing and having the best time. That's what we figured. We're in a we're in a friendly country anyway. So. We wondered why, and then when I got to the hotel they took us to, I, I, I found out that the entire seat of my pants was torn out. And that's, of course, what they were giggling about. <laughs> so, so from there, uh, they took us to, uh, they took us to uh, a, a place um, uh, where they, we deb they debriefed us, you know, put us all through the uh, questions about what happened, and then we were sent to a place in, uh, a place called Rathvik, which to our delight, we found out was a, was a, a tour, um, a ski resort in, in northern Sweden. And, uh, uh, Lowry <laughs> Ski Resort, the war is still that, on. That's where I'll stop because, <laughs> because <laughs> this is what Frank would get mad if I go. <laughs> now it's time, to, it's time for Frank because here's a guy, here's a guy that was back at the base, had no idea what happened to me. And you tell your story. Well, well I had an idea. I had an idea that you were shot down. <laughs> hey, I, have, I was losing. Yeah, it was. Uh, they called me at the radio stop and they told me that they were hit, they had two engines, and they didn't know where they were and all these things. So uh, I, I, uh, I didn't, uh, uh, I, I didn't know where he was. So I'm, I'm going to the, uh, everybody I know, so, I, I, the, they listed him as missing in action, and uh, I didn't. I didn't have any idea whether he was dead or alive. So uh, uh, I went to the chaplain, and where they, they didn't know anything. So uh, for two weeks, uh, I I didn't know what. So I wrote my mother. And I told her that he's missing in action. I don't, uh, I lied. I says, I think he's all right. Oh, well, I didn't lie, as it turned out, but I thought I wasn't good about I, <laughs> So, uh, uh, I wrote her a letter and told her he was missing in action. And that took a week. And then another week, I got back a letter. And she says, oh, I got a telegram the next morning that he was tur returned in, in uh, Sweden. So, oh, I don't know. I had some great days in my life, but that was the greatest day of my whole life. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. I can't top what he's been through, but I can try. Uh, I, I was an uh, armament company. Uh, Armament man. I was in charge of the bombs. I, I pulled the fuses before we dropped them. And the bad part of it is, 
you had to get it out if it did, didn't go off. So every once in a while, I had to go out on an open bomb bay, 20,000 feet below, walk out, and I usually had a screwdriver because the shackles were just holding the bombs. And, it, and what happened was, happened, we were taken off in, in solid fog all the time. And they'd, every once in a while, they, they'd, ice would get in there and they wouldn't go off. Usually, uh, the first couple of times I did it, I just kicked it or, or, or used a screwdriver and it popped off and then you drop it. But one time, uh, uh, I had a 2,000 pound bomb that hung up. And I went out there, and when you go out there, you have to put out a, uh, uh, you had to change it, you had to disconnect. Remember, you're, you're, you got all this equipment, electrical suit, the whole thing, you got to unplug everything. A mask, and, an and, oxygen mask. And uh, uh, so I had to uh, get an oxygen bottle. Usually they're only good for about five minutes because you need oxygen. You're at 22,000. So I'm walking on a, Aluminum walkway, eight inches wide, and I'm trying to hang on to the braces here. There's a 200 mile an hour wind coming up through the bomb bay, and what it does, it, it freezes your eyes, it, you, the, the wetness of the eyes, it, the witness. So if, if you're out there a few minutes, it isn't so bad. But one time, I went out there with a 2,000 pound bomb and uh, uh, it, uh, it, I, I tried as long as I could and then I had to come back, make sure I had ox oxygen and I couldn't get it out. And then uh, uh, I, says, uh, I told the pilot, I don't, uh, I don't know what's the matter, it just won't go on. So he, he says, well eventually, we finished the mission, we're coming down over France, I mean, coming down over our own lines, and he says, you sure that bomb's gonna stay out, as far as I know? Because if, if, if that bomb, if we couldn't get that out, we, all, we couldn't land with it. We'd have to bail out, all of, it, all of us would have had to bail out. So I says, I don't know, I can't do it. So as we come down over France, we got down to about 10,000 feet, and we just started to go over the channel, and all of a sudden, that bomb let loose. Uh, and when you're, when you're not tied, if you're tied down like he is, I wasn't tied down because I was always a waist cutter. I stood for nine hours every mission in an open window, and so, it, it was very serious. So uh, he, uh, uh, the, I hit the ceiling, and I looked down, and the bomb bay doors were floating. We had the bomb bay doors, but we were floating. We took the whole doors and, off. <laughs> and we were just the entering the chat. The we were just right. heading, and I'm seeing uh, some kind of destroyer. It was British destroyer or American destroyer, I don't know. And I'm looking at that bomb, and it looks like a direct hit. I thought, oh, is that going to be a court martial? <laughs> uh, it was, it was, uh, and as it was, this bomb hit right in front of it. I could see the boat go through the spray. So it was that close. So uh, it was, uh, so I, I was having a few troubles too. Well, and, and, a, and I had a couple close calls. I can't, you know, I tell his story, but I can't beat him. But no, it, uh, I actually uh, was standing, I was uh, standing uh, at the wind call, and a uh, flak came through the airplane. Well, when, when, the, when this stuff comes through the airplane, they, it, uh, it's all garbage, you know, they throw, there's wires and screws and, butt and everything, that's what, they put in the shell. Well, I'm standing there, and I uh, 
piece of metal came through and it, it hit me in the butt and it was red hot and I started jumping around uh, uh, because it was hot and the, the, the guy on the opposite side we were looking, he thought I flipped or something <laughs> so he was going to control me so he I don't know what he was saying but uh, he he got me on the ground and uh, I, I was trying to tell him but we had pulled out everything. You've got to talk through everything. But we, we had no way of communicating. In the third, first place, it's 30 degrees below zero. Uh, you've got a mask on. You, you, there's no way. And I'm trying to get them off of me. I, but uh, I, uh, all I got is a sore. So, uh, so I'm laying there. And then I'm getting cold. Uh, you know, I, well, that's understandable. Be, I, I thought I pulled the plug out of, out of my suit, but as it turned out, uh, what sa uh, saved me uh, was this piece of metal went hit my the wiry on my suit, and it slowed it just enough to burn my butt. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was, uh, so uh, I was very lucky. So when we come down, we had, I did. So I'm laying there and I'm getting cold, and I I saw a lot of cowboy pictures. So when it, when a guy gets shot and he doesn't die and he's dying, he gets cold. So I'm looking. Oh man, I had no way of checking uh, what was wrong with me. So I'm laying there and it's getting colder and colder. So finally, when I get down, the, well, the, the planes. Um, the planes who have wounded go in first. They're allowed to land first. Yeah. So his plane got to land first. So, so we got, you know, here I'm thinking, I'm in, I don't know what kind of shape I'm in. So I'm going in, and so they take my clothes off in the hospital, and uh, uh, they say, well, what's your problem? And I'm pointed at it. So they take my shorts off, and they, they started laughing. <laughs> And here was it was just a red spot the size of a dime, and after all that worrying, I mean, no the, purple heart for yeah, you. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, but but I had a real serious one. I uh, during when we were flying over the target, uh, the, next to my window there's a chute that. You notice Christmas tree trestle with it wrapped in paper. Well, that's that's what we throw out over the target to keep the radar. You know, it sh shakes up to wear it. So I've got a box of this stuff in, in, in right next to me. So i this one day I would put I'm doing it out the chute, and I. Moved, I moved down to pick up a pack, couple packages, and I heard a, like a, it sounded like a tearing sound. And uh, I, I said, oh, I wonder what that is. So I, I rose up, and where I stood was, when I, before, I was, it was aluminum. But I looked, and I was looking at blue sky. <laughs> And here, I, what apparently was a 20 millimeter shell went right through, and I, I stood there, and I couldn't ha comprehend what, uh, what I was seeing. I just couldn't believe it. And I, I stood, I must have stood there for three, four minutes as I was so sad. But I didn't get, it didn't worry me till I looked out the other side and there was another big hole. Then I realized what really happened, and my legs start shaking. <laughs> and, and I said, "Why? Why am I so afraid? It's supposed to be over." But uh, so uh, you know, I had my interest in place. And he had 32 missions. Like yeah. Well, that. yeah, and that's. Uh, uh, so uh, when I come back, I had I had a few uh, both. I had. Uh, like a nervous exhaustion. After after you do that a while, 
you're like a, a zombie, more or less. You function, but uh, uh, it wasn't bad. So I, but I wasn't that bad in those days. They didn't uh, like now. They they t when you when you have a mental problem or, or some kind of problem, they take you to the hospital. But in those days, they didn't. So I got by. Uh, you know, uh, I I could function, but I wasn't. It. I think it took me about two years to heal up from that before I I was really. You know, but I, uh, I, I was so lucky. Uh, you know, I'm. A, it was so lucky. Uh, I think the unique thing about us being brothers, um, if you think about it, um, when when we flew missions, uh, there were always planes that didn't come back. And so at the end of the day, uh, the whole this whole staff of the airport was there to watch the planes come back. You know, they they come flying in, and then. Uh, the guys, who, uh, the guys who maintain the planes, they're assigned to one plane. That's their plane. And they're looking for their plane to come back. And so the, uh, everybody's standing around and waiting for the plane. And there's always one or two that don't come back. You know? Now, it, uh, that's bad enough when you know, you're a mechanic and you lose your plane. I mean, that's, they, they think of it as their plane. But, when a brother can be on one of those planes, I mean that. Well, see, our now our plane. Uh, uh, we had a plane called Bri the Briny Marlin, and we flew that most of the time. Uh, once <laughs> in a while, it got shot. Out of the th thirty-one missions I had, we probably flew twenty-four on that, and. Uh, uh, I understand, and uh, uh, we inherited that from another crew uh, before. So uh, we we finished our we on a we call it a lucky airplane, and I understand it was one of the few B twenty fours that flew back to the states. For, that was the original one that at the one because most of them got too shot up. They just junk them and. Uh, so, uh, so <laughs> you, you can't. Uh, <laughs> it's almost sound like a fairy tale, isn't it? But uh, it's a, a true story. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, I think that's pretty good. <laughs>